So far, we've looked at our results in a plan view, a drainage long section profile, and inside reports. A third way we can look at our data is by importing and exporting to a spreadsheet. So we're going to the network editor and using the import export button. We have this selected so that it will go to a spreadsheet clipboard. It will also be written to the file clipboard.txt and we're exporting the data. Selecting the run button, we'll take all the data from the 12D network and put it onto the clipboard. Moving over to an Excel clipboard, I'm going to clear out what's there and do a paste. Now let's take a look at the data that's been pasted in. First of all, the three rows. Column A1 has the letters 12D. If this information was to be pasted back into 12D, we'd go looking for that as a signature to say it's our data. The rest of the data on the first row indicates if the column below has to do with a pit, a string, or a pipe, which is farther along to the right here. The second row indicates the attribute name. Now you'll notice that some of these attribute names have an asterisk in front of them. The asterisk means that it's a calculated value and it cannot be imported back into 12D expecting the 12D model to be updated. The third row indicates the type of data that will appear in the column below. It can be a UID, which is a universal ID number, an integer, which is a number without any decimal places, a piece of text, as in these examples, or a real number, which is a number with decimals. Now let's take a look at the first two columns. The first column is the string ID. This is how 12D knows when it reads the file which string is supposed to be updated. The PID ID indicates which PID is supposed to be updated. If you plan on bringing the information back into 12D, do not touch the first three rows and do not touch the first two columns. Now, in order to make browsing this a little bit easier, I'm going to do a Windows freeze pane here, just so that our string names and pit names remain as I move across the columns. So, as to move across here, you can see the type of information that's there, X location, Y locations, there's your pipe types, invert levels, diameters. If we go along far enough, we get to calculated values, calculated KUs, calculated Ks, all these different values that you saw inside your reports. Now, if we want to customize this, we can, and we can export only the columns you want in only and in the order that you want them. Now, what I'd like to demonstrate to you now is how if you change data here, it will update what's inside 12D. So, I'd like to use the pipe type for this example. I'm going to change the pipe type of the pipe that crosses the road from a class 2 into a class 3. Now, the one that crosses the road is the I06, or if it's the pipe, it's I06 to manhole 1. I'm going to change that to a class 3. Now, in order to bring this information back into 12D, of course, I have to include that column, but I'd also need to include the first two columns as well. So, I'm going to copy this section. I'd be more than welcome to highlight all the data and do that as well. Now, I'm going to go come up here and do a copy. Then I'm going to move back into 12D, and I'm going to change it from export to import. After selecting import, I'm going to run that. It's going to read the data from the clipboard, and now if I go back to the editor, you can see that our pit type has been changed from a, go to the next one there, to a class 3 as it crosses the road. Now, that's how to do a standard import-export. The next process we're going to take a look at is how to create a customized report. Now, we're going to look at how to create a customized report. We're going to use the import-export once again, only this time, instead of exporting to all data, we're going to drop this down and select Customize List File. Now, the last time we did an export, it wrote out to a file called output list.txt. This, whenever we do an all data, this will contain all of the variable names. So, if I was to go open that up, you'll see that these names you see in this list are very similar to the ones that we saw in this second row here. There's only a slight differences. Every once in a while, we see these commands called pit data. If I move down far enough, you'll find 
pipe data. The idea here is that whenever you encounter a pit data or pipe data, it switches modes from pit to pipe. So in here it was saying pit data. Now under pit data it also will accept a string ID. And there's your pit data again with your pit ID. So you recognize those names. Now what we're going to do is to create an export that will only contain the pit name. Well, first of all, those two columns. We don't really want the string name. But we like to have is that pit name, followed by the pit type, and then also the pipe type. Now if I want to switch from pit data to pipe data, I have to go grab that name called pipe data, take a copy of that, and put it up here. Now I also have to go down below and I'm looking for the pipe type. I'm going to highlight that data and put it up above here. And we can go OK to get rid of that message. Now, if we're looking for any other data, we're more than, light, more than happy to include that as well. But let's start that just for our first example. So we're going to highlight everything else in that list and delete it. Now because we plan on reusing this list, we're going to save it as something else. I'm going to save this as pit pipe types. Pit pipe types dot text. And I'm going to save that file. Close that. And now when I'm ready to do my export, I'm going to go and pick that one called pit pipe text. And I'm going to go run that. Now if I was to jump across to Excel and to go paste that in, you'd see that I would only get those few columns. I got the string and the pit IDs as I wanted, the names, the pit types, and the pipe types. So now I'd be more than welcome to go and do a copy and paste and change a few of these into manholes, change a couple more pipe types. I'm going to change these into RCPs instead. Now, I'm going to highlight all that data, ensuring that the 12D is in the first corner of what I'm highlighting. Go back into 12D, select the import, and go run that, and it's going to update my data. So if I go back to my editor now, and take a look at this pipe types on the southern side of my road, and go to my pipe, and type, you'll notice they've been changed to RCPs. If I go to my pit type and go, you'll notice this one's still an AL2D. The one that we changed, if we take a look at these, were manhole names inlets 5 and 6. So if I was to go down here and jump over to inlets 5 and 6, we would see that the pit type was now changed to manhole. So rather than importing and exporting that very large amount of text, what we can do is create customized lists that have just what we want. Now that we've demonstrated how to import and export a customized report, let's look at exporting these, but with the idea that we will never bring these re this report back into 12D. So we're going to use the same list as before. I'm going to open that back up. But now we're going to include some extra pipe diameter data. I'd like to include the diameter as well. Now often when we report diameters, we like them in millimeters rather than meters. So on two lines before this, I'm going to put the commands factor and then 1000. What this means is that the next attribute that's encountered will be multiplied by 1000. If I wanted to control the number of decimals exported, I could put in the command decimals 3, so pardon me, 0, and then it would be exported with no decimal places. Now, if we're only exporting these, no planning on bringing it back in, we don't have to include the pit and the pipe ID at the top. Now, the other thing we might be interested in would be some of the pipes coming into that pit. So we could include upstream pipe data. Now this is a command similar to the, ups, the pipe data, but now it looks just at upstream pipes. So what I'm interested in there now is the diameters of the upstream pipes. So I'm going to copy those commands there and put them straight down below. 
So now we are going to get, first of all, the exiting pipe diameter, and then the upstream pipe diameters. So I'm going to save this again. I can close that. Return to 12D. We're doing the export using the same one, and we're going to select the run command. Once again, we're going to return to Excel, close that, and we're going to paste this data back in. The first thing you're going to notice is that we no longer have the string ID and the PID ID. Now, if we take a look at this, the first line pipe that we have on our line is a 375, and it has no upstream pipes. IO2 has one upstream pipe, a 375. If you look at manhole 1, it has a downstream pipe of a 525, but it's got two upstream pipes, a 375 and a 525. So let's go back and look at this inside 12D. So it's manhole 1 that we're looking for. So I'm going to go back to the editor. I'm going to jump over or down to manhole 1. And you see that we do have two pipes coming into this. Well, first of all, the outgoing pipe. This is that RCB 525. If we go and look at the IO6, the one directly upstream, you'll see that that's the 525 coming in. And then if we went to take a look at IO2, that's going to be the other 375. So you can see we've got a report that lists all of the upstream pipes. Now there's no limit, or a large limit, number, to the number of upstream pipes that are allowed to come in, but you're only allowed to have one downstream. Therefore, as soon as you ask for upstream data, you could get a number of columns for these. Now the rest of our pipes only have downstream data, so you'll see that there's only one downstream, one upstream pipe. We're now going one step farther in customizing our report, and we're going to be throwing away these headers that come from 12D and adding in our own header. So in here, instead of having just pit name, I'm just going to have the word name. And then it's going to be the pit type, so I'm just going to write in pit type. And the next one is going to be my pipe type. Then I'm looking at my, up, the, my downstream diameter, so I'm going to write downstream diameter and then in brackets, I'm going to put millimeters. And then these other ones are going to be my upstream diameters. So this is going to be my upstream diameter 1. Excuse my order for doing these. And an upstream diameter 2. Now I want this to become the header for my report. So I'm going to take a copy of that, and I'm going to go back and put that into my customized list. Import, export, go open this up one more time, and at the very top, I'm going to paste that in. And I'm going to add the word header at the very top. Now what that means is the following line becomes a header. Now one thing about copying and pasting back in is that there is a tab between name and pit data, and that's what's going to make my header appear nicely inside a spreadsheet. Now I'm going to save this again. We're going to close this and I'm going to go run this. And now when I go and paste it into the spreadsheet, I no longer get the headers we used to get, but rather I get the new headers that we've defined for ourselves. Now these have just been a few quick examples, but I'm sure you can appreciate how you can create your own pit and pipe schedules or customize reports by using these methods.